Be quiet. Not really, but do you know if you're one of those people that talks too much? I'm going to help you recognise if you need to talk less and also how to work with that colleague or boss that just seems to go on all the time. This is Productivity Ace. Let's get it done. In the workplace, we all do a lot of talking and being able to communicate effectively is one of the key skills that all managers and companies are looking for in their employees. And not everybody is good at it. In fact, the ability to talk a lot or not enough can be a real weakness to some people and cause their relationships and performance to really suffer. I'm sure you can think of at least two or three people that you work with that just talk too much, either generally in meetings or just generally. You'll certainly know some people. We're going to explore some of the reasons why people talk too much and do stick around to the end because I'm going to go through a simple three-step rule that you can use to ensure that you're always aware of how much you're talking and whether you need to rein it in. So, some of the reasons why you find people talking too much. Uncomfortable with silences. This is really common. Many people don't like silences. Silences in any conversation can feel really uncomfortable and in meetings or conference calls, a simple silence of a few seconds can feel like minutes. This is why we need to insert ums and ahs into our sentences without realising it. That silence in a conversation can cause an increased stress response, increased temperature, sweating and some people can panic. So you'll find that people who are very uncomfortable with silences will tend to talk through them, filling the dead space with the first thing that comes into their head or a slightly amended repeat of a point that they only just made. To the expert communicator, the silences in a conversation are actually a really valuable tool. They can be used to emphasise a point, to gain control of an argument or to proactively involve other people in a conversation. So if you find yourself in panic mode when silences happen, then try and practice and make silences your friend. The more comfortable you are, the more effective your interactions will be. Pressure to contribute. There's no doubt that meetings and conference calls are a psychological minefield. And to many people, there's nothing worse than attending a call and ending up having not said anything. I mean, if that's the case, why are you there? And we've all been in calls where somebody hasn't spoken at all. And it's human nature to end up thinking, why was that person even invited? So to the quieter individual or the person that's unable to get involved, there can be an implied pressure that, hey, you're on this call, but you're not saying anything and people are watching. So you'll find people sometimes trying to avoid being caught in this trap by making sure that they're talking at as many points during the call as they can. They might not be saying anything of substance, but by constantly making themselves heard, they can avoid being classed as that person who didn't say anything. You know, that person who didn't contribute. And this can actually backfire. Because speaking for the sake of speaking without contributing anything of substance can also get somebody a reputation as a person who takes meetings off track or wastes time. In my experience, I've worked with lots of people that they may not say much in calls, but when they do, it's always a valuable observation or a point worth listening to. It's not about how much they say, but what they say. If you're looking for advice on how to become a meeting master, well, I've got a detailed course all about how to make meetings work for you and to help make them a really valuable tool. Take a look at the link in the description. You can take it for free. And if you sign up for our newsletter, then you can grab the Mastering Meetings ebook for free as well. Links in the description. Popularity. Talking releases dopamine, the pleasure hormone. So as you talk, you feel good. And to some people, that really is like a drug. The feeling of talking is something they enjoy, so they talk and talk and talk, and often don't say much of substance or constantly repeat the points they've already made. Talking also makes people feel like they're being perceived as being popular in a group. After all, we've all got those mates that are the life and soul of the party and they tend to be pretty chatty. I've certainly worked with people who talk constantly in meetings and calls and it's all down to either a fear of being unpopular or a desire to be popular. In reality what ends up happening is that the constant talker is most certainly not popular. We've all got too many meetings, too many calls and spend way too much time listening to people when we could be getting on with the mountain of work that we've all got. The constant talker tramples all over the most valuable resource we've got and that's our time. The most popular people, in my experience, are the ones that cut out the crap and get right to the point. They arrive at meetings prepared and organised and they only talk when what they have to say is taking the conversation and the objective of the meeting forward. Now they are people I want to work with and I'm sure you want to work with them as well. So if you're a big talker then how can you get better? How can you fix your problem? First of all, improve self-awareness. On this channel we talk about emotional intelligence a lot, in particular the art of being self-aware and that's very important here. How can you fix something if you can't even recognise when you're doing it? 
So building that level of emotional intelligence, that self and situational awareness is super important. There are plenty of resources available to help you do that, so I won't go into the details here. Suffice to say that once you have the power to recognise when you're doing something or when you're talking too much, then you'll be able to do something about it. Pause to allow jump in points. Often when you're talking or making a lengthy point, you'll have numerous thoughts and words popping into your head. Sometimes it feels like you can't get the words out fast enough. And while that satisfies the dopamine hit for you, it doesn't give anyone else an opportunity to respond. We've all been in those calls where somebody's speaking and it feels like an impossibility to find even the smallest gap in their output and jump to jump in and respond. Hell, it sometimes seems like they aren't even going to take a breath. It's annoying, right? So remember that feeling when it's you that's talking. The more you talk, the more you don't give other people to have opportunities to contribute. The more people will be getting annoyed and the less they'll be listening to what you're actually saying. A simple technique is to build some jumping in points into any monologue. We'll talk a bit more about those in the technique at the end of the video. And as we've spoken about pausing to allow jump in points, an even better tactic is to actively invite other people into the conversation by asking for their opinions or comment. This can be used by managers to ensure inclusivity and to bring people into a conversation that might not be comfortable interrupting or jumping in themselves. It's a great way to solicit opinions and contributions from those that may be junior or introverted. Recognize the rant. In most work conversations, it's usually a good idea to keep personal opinions out of it. But there are occasions where somebody might go off on a long speech or a kind of rant. These are very much weak points in a conversation, as well as dominating the airspace, they can lead to a lack of self-control, which sometimes results in someone saying something that they might later regret. And you'll even sometimes hear the person recognise that they're about to lose control, but they'll do it anyway. They'll say something like, well, I probably shouldn't say this, but... or, I might regret this later, but... And going off on that rant is very tempting. It's a maximum dopamine hit and it certainly has people listening, but it's almost certainly a bad idea. So get those self-awareness skills to a level where you can feel and recognize the rant building up and make sure you slap it down again. And if you end up announcing that you probably shouldn't say this, then don't say it. Because a rant not only dominates the conversation, but it dominates it with topics that can damage your career. Now let's talk about the traffic light rule. Here's the three-step method for you to be able to stop yourself falling foul of these dangers. Mark Goulston is the author of Just Listen, Discover the Secret to Getting Through to Absolutely Anybody. In a recent Harvard Business Review article, Goulston detailed his traffic light rule. It divides speaking into 20 second buckets. The first bucket is the green bucket. For the first 20 seconds, you're on the green light. Your listener is engaged in listening, and as long as you're being relevant, you're all good. The next 20 seconds are the amber bucket. Your risk is increasing that the other people are beginning to lose a little interest or they think you're going on too long. And yes, that's only 40 seconds, but people do. And then after 40 seconds, you're in the red zone. After 40 seconds of continuous speaking, the red light is very much on. It's time to stop or offer a jumping in point for other people. Now I've tried monitoring conversations using these 20 second buckets and it's remarkably accurate, even though it doesn't sound like a lot of time. People do start losing interest after only 20 or so seconds, and it really doesn't take very long for someone to start getting irritated or frustrated. And a minute of speaking doesn't sound like a lot, but try monitoring it the next time you're in conversation. It's actually a long time. Keeping control of how much you are speaking is one of the best ways to improve your effectiveness in work conversations. And like many workplace skills, it takes practice and refinement, but it's a skill that I've seen people use really well to progress their own careers and be better managers and leaders. And for more on being a great manager and a great leader and being more productive, check this video up here and I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching.